It is time to take on The Rock. We're going to boost some stats real quick, like we do. Like, this is the most exciting part for everybody, I'm sure. Uh, after we go out, high agility. High agility. Boost up the legs. All right, good to go. I don't really pay attention to what, what stats we're boosting anymore. We just got matches to fight. We got Raw to talk about. Got my sheet, as always. I'll try to read the handwriting. Let's start going here. Uh, so, this week's Raw... Opened with one uh, Chris Jericho reclaiming his horrible, horrible TV show. Uh, he was stomping around, acting like he was hot shit. Uh, claimed he put Ambrose in the hospital. He was broken. He was no longer a man. All that kind of dumb shit. Uh, he unveiled that he still had Mitch, Ambrose's little pod plant friend. He had him underneath. He had him hidden. There's a big reveal of the broken dead plant. He was like, "This is worth nothing. I'll take it back." Just like I took back my show. And I was ranting and raving for a while. Uh, eventually, the uh, the crazy Italian dubstep hit. What the? Oh my god! This is this is pissed me off. Uh, crazy Italian dubstep hit. Big cast came out, and he kind of got in Jericho's face. Told him all about how. Big Cass could whip his ass and do it for Enzo. And the craziest sh sh part of this was Big Cass, who's seven foot tall, because you can't teach that, uh, standing up in front of Jericho. It looks like he almost has like two feet on him. Like it's just a giant freaking difference between the two of them. So they were mouthing off, as wrestlers do. And after the end of uh, Big Cass trying to tell Jericho what was up, Went backstage to Steph and Chris, have a nice little talk about what just happened and how how and uh, Big Cass is running his mouth and all that wrestling, all that wrestling e good shit, which of course leads to Steph saying, "Well, because of that, you're gonna have a match against Big Cass tonight," and she called Jericho S A W F T, and she tried to put on the Italian accent. And it was a horrible Italian accent. It was worse than most of the accents I do. But it was still kind of like oddly adorable. Because she's on this kick of trying to be more fun and more entertaining, I guess. She was, she's trying to be a nicer lady. So they stepped a match for the end of the night with Big Cass and Jericho. And Steph doing all the dumb things like, you can't teach that. Uh, mocking some of Jericho's old catchphrases at the same time. I was kind of hoping she would call him a hoe trash bag like he used to always do to her. But now that we're PG, I guess we can't do that anymore. But it was one of the better promos I've ever seen her cut. Like, she looked like she was actually having fun screwing around. Which is different than how she used to act when uh, Triple H was around. And now, that I th and now that I think about what I just said there, uh, I wonder if they're setting up Steph and Shane against Triple H when he comes back. Because that'd be cool too. Like, if she realizes that, fuck you. Uh, maybe she realizes that wrestling's more fun when she's actually having fun with her brother instead of being a horrible biatch of a lady with her husband. And I don't know what just made me think of that. I guess just talking this through as we're doing this. But that would be an amazing twist at the end of this. I would, uh, I'm calling it now. But if they do it, I'm going to be super fucking pumped on that. Uh, so we went to the Corbin against... Um, Dolph Ziggler match. Uh, I, I'm already over those two. I'm only gonna... As you all know, I only really talk about the parts that hold my attention. Uh, they talked about how the Battle Royal got screwed up because of Ziggler and Corbin and all that bullshit. So, uh, Baron Corbin got his win. Which I feel like he should have had the last pay-per-view to make him look tougher than he does now. And maybe not... Gives Ziggler a winner or two first, but they are kind of setting up the cool indie. Oh shit, I can't get back in. Uh, indie darling ish versus uh, veteran. Kind of like what they were doing with uh, Jericho and uh, Dean Ambrose. I mean, not that Ambrose is a rookie, but same general idea. 
Like, start putting the younger people with the older, no the older veterans that know what they're doing, just to try to switch it up, maybe teach them some new stuff. Not this. He's looking at it again. He's pulling out all the stops. Fuck you! Yeah! So we'll see where that goes. Uh, after that was a segment with Charlotte and Woo! Uh, sweet talking. Fuck you! Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, cool, he didn't do. Covers. Uh, Charlotte and Rick were buttering up Shane. Oh, Shane, you know, your sister's such a horrible person. Oh, you're so much better. Oh, you're this, you're this. Just to get, not get Rick Flair out of trouble. But he ended up being the ban for him at um, the next pay-per-view, Extreme Rules, is still in effect. And along with that, he was banned from Charlotte's match later on Raw. Just for acting stupid. Uh, so there was a gold, uh, gold Fandango, R Truth, Tyler Breeze match. Uh, I skipped that because I don't care about them. That's something bad's happening. Getting the music doubles up here. So after that horrible trash bag of a match, uh, Sami Zayn found everyone backstage. That's the three people in the triple threat that thus far. Uh, Cesaro, Miz, and Owens. And he got himself a match where if he won his match against one Mr. Miz, he'd be allowed in the triple threat match and it would be a four-way instead of a three-way at Extreme Rules if he wins. So they... Let's talk about The Rock. They, uh... You will they talk up. They talk about that a little bit. They say they'll do that tonight. That uh, leads to another Chef and Stain moment where Chef and Shane... Moment. It's going to be a tough where match, they sure. give each other fuck me eyes again and keep that creepy sibling thing going on, like flowers in the attic bullshit. And at the pay per view, it's so no they did different. that. They I'm you know they there. they made eyes and said, "I love you. I'll make out with you later." Style. And that led into a Paige Charlotte match. I haven't seen Paige for a while, but she had her grand reentrance, you whatever you want to call it. She came back. Uh, her and Charlotte had a pretty good match the whole time. Natalia was on commentary. And she was doing to JBL what Kevin Owens always does to um, Kevin Owens. And it was actually really good. Like, she was constantly just putting down JBL and saying he was old and senile. And whenever he would talk, he would tell her to shut up. Uh, she would tell him to shut up. Oh, excuse me. So it was actually a really good match. The commentary really added to uh, what was going on. Yeah, drink. Throws getting tired. Ugh. So they had their match, and eventually Natalia starts talking trash to show up to Distractor. So Ric Flair comes stomping out, styling, profiling. Woo! And shit, not, not off to a bad start. Uh, so he comes out. So Shane comes down immediately after. The whole match is still going on the whole time. He comes down with security, throws Ric Flair the fuck out. Um, that in turn leads to Charlotte getting distracted. Uh, Paige wins the match, and Natalia talks a little more trash, gets in her face. He's a piece of shit is what he is. Uh, so, that match should be interesting at Extreme Rules. It's uh, two weeks away at this point, I think. But I'll be interested to see if they actually give Natalia a title shot, or if she's just here for a background filler for the time being for a little bit. But, We'll see. There we go. Uh, next up was Sami Zayn versus the win uh, versus the Miz. Uh, the disappointing part was they did not give Sami Zayn his entrance on TV. At least not the recorded version I watched. Instead, they just gave the Miz half of his, not on the TV timeout, which we'll talk about later. But at least Sami had everyone going. Ole, 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 uh, during his match, so, fuck, that was good enough, it's not everyone singing his entrance with him, which is the best, but it was a stylish follow-up, which is just as good, uh, so of course, uh, everyone's watching the match backstage, they show Kevin Owens with his feet up watching TV, they have Cesaro just stand there in his tracksuit watching TV, and as you can guess, uh, Sami Zayn wins the match, gets himself his title shot. It was 
Or, yeah, title shot. Uh, Fatal 4-Way. Uh, it was a really, really good match, too. There was points where you thought both of them might win. Uh, of course, with the stories are setting up at the moment, it was kind of obvious that Sammy would get a sh shot, but that's not really the point. This match will have a lot of big moves. One question will be... Uh, I got distracted every second shit. Uh, where are my things, yeah. Uh, so after that, uh, there was an interview with Becky Lynch. They talked about how last week Emma poked her in her bad eye, which was injured at WrestleMania in the first place. And... I don't know if Becky Lynch actually has a bad eye for real life, not wrestling story related, but her one eye does look bad in general. And it's not an insult, but she just looks like she has like a lazy eye or a bad eye. If you ever notice. Yeah, call Roman Reigns a cab. It's Anaconda Vice. It's Anaconda Vice. It's Anaconda Vice. It's Anaconda Vice. With no boost, we will take this. There it is. So anyway, so Becky Lynch is talking to... It wasn't Renee, it was the other girl. JoJo, right? Uh, back talking to JoJo, and Emma comes up, and she's like, I don't care about your, your bad WrestleMania eye. She's like, what about the eyes in the back of your head? And all of a sudden, uh, another another girl comes from behind and just jumps Becky Lynch. And it was the uh, debut of Dana Brooke, I believe her name is. She is from NXT. I don't remember ever seeing her wrestle, but I don't watch NXT all that much. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if it's going to be like a different, uh, like a three-way match. Or if the, Emma and Dana are just going to fuck with Becky all the time. Or maybe Sasha Banks and... Becky tag team kind of nonsense, or they're saying something up there. Something will definitely happen with that. But I thought it was fucking hilarious when Emma was like, Yeah, she's like, You should work on the eyes in the back of your head. And just someone just clocks her in the back of the head. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, Kalisto and Rusev had a match. I don't know what happened because I don't care. Uh, after that, they set up earlier in the night a six man three on three tag team match with. The official, not the Bullet Club, just the club. He's got him hooked. Of Anderson and AJ and have to worry about internal injuries. all that good stuff. Uh, so now it's official that that they are, they are, we'll call them back together. And I don't know if they'll ever actually be the Bullet Club because that's kind of, I feel like that's violent for the WWE. I feel like I feel like Bullet Club is what's going to end up being if it ever comes up. He is the good guy in every match. But, <laughs> you know, that's usually the case, Michael. If Cena comes across as the but, uh, straight laced small town guy, who yeah. happens to so be they're official. That a, a six man tag match where the rule was if you got pins, you were eliminated and it'll just go until the end. So, of course, you know what's going to happen at the end. You know what the final, the final end of this match was going to be. But the bullshit part before we get to that was one of the eliminations, I think it's when one of the Usos went out, uh, one of the eliminations was done during a camera break, or during a commercial break, where Michael Cole is like, the match continues live, next! Ooh. But, uh, so, camera cuts out, camera cuts back, while you were gone, you missed my bubble getting eliminated. And I think that's bullshit. I know the wrestlers talk to each other and know when they're on commercial, not on commercial. So I'm not sure why they didn't wait. But whatever. Uh, so that goes on with the, along with the Sami Zayn cutting off his entrance bullshit stuff that I was talking about earlier. Where they really only have one chance a week to do their stuff. They're, I don't see a reason of why they should cut people's entrances. Or if we're going to cut out on the wrestling... Cut out on the boring parts. Don't cut out on the parts that people might actually care about. Like a like an elimination in a goddamn elimination match. It's like when they fucked up during the Royal Rumble. Like every year Kofi Kingston has his special Kofi spot where he does something wacky. And this year it was missed because you're too busy fucking giving Roman Reigns hand jobs outside the ring to set up for his dramatic I'm gone for an hour and I come back move. So I don't like that shit. You can practically feel 
Uh, at the end of the AJ, God damn it! At the end of the uh, AJ Roman Reigns match, there was a moment where you thought uh, they were gonna fight with a chair. Roman's kind of handed it to AJ and was like, "If you want to do it, fucker, come do it." AJ kicked the chair back and was like, "In spite of the fact that AJ started snapping out more, and was like, you want us to be official? The club's official." And like being a hard ass, he still doesn't want to take the. Uh, he doesn't want to take the uh, chair heel route yet. He's still doing his own thing. Which I think is an interesting way to do it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if they want to make him face or a heel. And I know if he becomes Bullet Club, he, becomes, he goes in that weird NWO-ish, is he a good guy, is he a bad guy position that they put wrestlers in sometimes. But him and Roman were uh, doing this dumb little cherry game of who's going to hit who. He throws it to Reigns. He go acts like he's going to do his flying the phenomenal forearm. He kind of jumps over Roman Reigns and rolls out of the wing. The ring. Because Reigns grabbed the chair and was going to cheap shot him like the fuck he is. Uh, but they're still, they're still setting it up in a very cool way, I feel. They, that, the, AJ has a stable, but he's not maybe like really in the stable. Which, you know... That, that, that's the way to do this for now. Hold on. I got to pop my back. I'm falling apart. Uh, uh, Zack Ryder somehow negotiated his way into the four-way Extreme Rules match. That's an interesting fight if those two actually fought. Uh, he weaseled his way into the four-way match. He said... If I beat Kevin Owens tonight, I should be allowed to uh, be in the Fatal 4-Way instead of him. So him and Kevin Owens had a match. I don't really give a shit about it. You know, you knew who was going to have what was who was going to win, what was going to happen. We don't care about this. Uh, so that happened. That was a thing. Uh, the New Day starts making fun of the Vaude villains. How do you say their name? Vaude villains? Vaude villains? Vaudeville villains? And I had a problem with that for a long time, so I'm glad they addressed it as well. But one of the be the best better best parts of all of this was they were like, the Vaude villains come from a day where people didn't like us very. Where people was it? They 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 came they came from a time where people like us weren't very popular. So of course, it's. The best alluding to a racist black joke they could have done. Which is funny just because, I mean, the New Day's black. Uh, they're like, smartphone users was the was the payoff for the joke. And I thought it was really funny. I, it was a really interesting way to, to do, I guess it's an old-timey joke. And, I mean, obviously, if the New Day wants to make allude to a black joke, I feel like they're more than welcome to, to be honest with you. They can do whatever they want to, really. Watch this! Right away! Out of nowhere! Guys are gonna be very aggressive. The double arm DDT, call it on eye. Yeah, call this guy a cab. Look out! What the? That's his opponent's finishing maneuver. I see into this already. Well, we're on the move here. Uh, so they made fun of the villains. Uh, New Day fought the Dudleys, which was interrupted then by the Vaude villains. Uh, the Look ones the little smush matches where everyone just acts up and fights the side, uh, punches each other around, acts up. The Dudleys got the win off of this because of the shenanigans of the Vaude villains coming out. Uh, and that brought us to the end of the night. No, no, nothing really big to me happened in the, uh, in the tag team match, though. So, you know? Just the usual New Day nonsense. I feel like the best part of all New Day matches are the promos in the beginning. Uh, it's not an insult to the wrestling because they're all extremely talented. I just don't really... I don't know. It's, it's the same thing. Tag team matches, I feel like, are always more of the same. More so than singles matches are. Especially when they keep having the Dudleys out there and the same two or three tag teams every week. It gets repetitive to me. A little boring. But that, that's, again... My personal opinion, and that brings up Big Cass, uh, Big Cass Jericho match for the last 
End of the night, main event, showstopper. So Jericho starts to come out with his flashy little jacket. You see the lights on his jacket starts to start to flicker and fade out and warp around like ghosts. And then he does like you see the they see the coat do like Shut up. Uh, the, the coat does like the worm and like the robot dances down to the ring. You find out that Ambrose stole his coat to avenge Mitch's death. So they kind of they kind of fought around, but not really. They had some shenanigans where they ar they argued a little bit. Uh, eventually, how did it play out? Uh, they, they start they started fighting around a little bit. Uh, Big Cass came out when Jericho was trying to leave, and Jericho got a little mouthy with Big Cass. Uh, Big Cass, he slapped Big Cass in the face, which is a horrible idea. Because he's seven foot tall, you can't teach that. Uh, Cass throws him back in the ring after he was trying to get away from Ambrose, like I said. And Ambrose gives him dirty deeds. Ambrose cuts apart Jericho's $15,000 electric jacket and destroys in the ring. All as retaliation for poor Mitch's death. Uh, Big Cass is there the whole time in the background hanging out. So I wonder if maybe him and Ambrose will do something together, like as a team against Jericho. Uh, but Jericho, as Michael Cole put it, does this his best fat man in a little coat impersonation as he tries to put on his cut in half expensive jacket. They show Shane and Steph in the back one last time. They give each other fuck me eyes again. Shane says, your new opinion is, I love your new attitude. It's so great you're on board now. Steph's like, thank you for the opportunities you're giving me to work on Raw with you and all this nice stuff. Which kind of also makes me think about maybe it'll be her and Shane against Triple H, but I don't know. Uh, they end their segment with the sexy time eyes once again. And they just linger on Steph way too long where she looks happy and sad at the same time. So it kind of looks like she's plotting something against uh, Shane, but you can't really tell. I guess we will find out in a couple weeks when maybe Extreme Rules, some bullshit happens, or... You never really know with wrestling. It could be next week on Raw. That move is sick. You can see him struggling to stand after all the damage he's taken. To your point about finding a weakness in attacking, from my experience commentating... But yeah, so, as a whole, I thought Raw was pretty good this week. All the story things, I feel like are building up nicely with Extreme Rules. I feel like they're doing better of keeping the stories going instead of just dumb bullshit here and there. And, yeah, can't wait until next week. As you saw, we are now... Another rivalry in the books. We are the champion of Night Champions. The Rock is nobody to me. We'll find out here that The Rock and I are no longer in a rivalry. Our stats have been reset. And there that is. So yeah, we'll have to pick our next. Oh, Hell in the Cell! I gotta try to get Hell in the Cell Max match. Uh, we will try. We will pick our next rivalry at probably next episode. Until then, thank you everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed Raw this week as much as I did. Uh, my voice doesn't always reflect my level of excitement. Uh, Raw was definitely very good though. Uh, thank again, like I said, thank you everybody for watching. See you later. Peace.